Hi and welcome to Rose Red Homestead. Today we're going to be making ghee. G-H-E-E, -E, ghee. Um, you may be wondering what ghee is. It is simply butter with all of the milk solids and the water removed. So that's what our adventure will be today. We're going to be uh, making enough for six half pints that will store indefinitely on our shelves. And so we'll be right back and begin. Ghee is very famous and very popular in East India. It is used in East Indian cooking and has been for centuries. One of the reasons that makes ghee so uh, desirable is that when once you remove the water and the milk solids, then it will store without refrigeration indefinitely, especially the way we are going to do it, which is we are going to put it in a vacuum sealed canning jar. Now you can can regular butter and you do it in, with a water bath method. There are lots of ways that are for canning butter. I don't particularly like to can butter as butter because once you take it out of the water bath canner, then for the next 12 hours, you have to shake it up to remix the um, oil with the milk solids so that you do have the butter mixture afterward. I would by far rather do ghee, which is healthier for us anyway, and which will store without refrigeration for actually years if we vacuum seal it. So let's talk about what is actually in a cube of butter. And I'm going to talk while I unwrap these. I have three pounds of butter right here. It will take three pounds of butter to do um, six, one cup, which is the same as half pint jars. So we, um, we watch for sales on butter and I always use unsalted butter. And uh, a lot of times we will get it at Costco, but the, the better quality your butter, the better quality your ghee will be. So in butter, actually there is quite a bit of water, which we will be cooking out. And also there will be milk solids. Now those milk solids consist of um, sugar and protein. And we don't want any of that in our ghee. And uh, the sugar is lactose. Quite often it is that, um, that part of the butter, the milk solids that um, uh, causes people to have lactose intolerance. Um, and so people who are lactose intolerant can use ghee. Ghee is also used by lots of the uh, current diet um, methods that are available now. And um, that's not why we use it, but it's, it's, very, it's a very healthy alternative to regular butter. Several months ago, I had a group of ladies from church come over and we did a little workshop on pressure canning. And as part of that, um, we, I demonstrated how to do ghee. And quite a few of the ladies were fascinated by it. They took notes. Um, since that time, I have done more research and have fixed a few more batches of ghee. And I have come up with what I think is a much better process for doing it. And uh, when the other day, when one of the, those ladies that was in attendance asked if I would please do a video on ghee, I thought, great, this is just a wonderful opportunity for me to uh, sort of correct some of the processes that I explained last time. So I hope those ladies will come watch this video so that they will have a, a, an easier to follow process. Now, what is going to happen is that we are going to be taking this pot over onto the stove top and we're simply going to simmer the butter, bring it to a low boil. And the whole process is going to take somewhere between 30 minutes and 45 minutes. Now we are not going to stay on camera for that entire time, but instead of using a temperature gauge, which is what I used last time, 
Now I have learned to look for signals from the actual butter as it simmers itself. So there is one type of foam that will be produced when the, sh when the um, sugars are boiling off. And we'll look at that foam and we'll talk about that foam. And then the oil will separate from the water and pretty soon when the, the bubbles become larger, and I'll point all of this out as we go, the bubbles will become larger, the sound will be a little bit different, and that's because the water has separated from the oil, and because we all know that oil is lighter than water, the, the water will be on the bottom and the buttery oil will be on the top, and as that water begins to boil down here, it will push up through the oil and make a larger bubble, a noisier bubble, and we want to keep it at that stage until all of that water is gone. And then at the end, toward the end, um, the, the uh, sugars and some of the protein will sink down to the bottom and at that point we have clarified butter. But we don't want to stop there because that isn't ghee yet. Rather we're going to turn up the heat just a little bit and we're going to caramelize the sugars on the bottom of the pan because we don't want those sugars in the ghee either. And if we caramelize those they're not going to go anywhere. They will just get stuck on the bottom of the pan but we have to watch very carefully because there's about a 60 second window between caramelizing and burning. And we certainly don't want to burn this butter, so we'll watch carefully. Um, some people skim the foam off, um, and if you do that prematurely, it sort of interrupts the cycle. So we won't be skimming anything off, at least at first. Every single time I do ghee, it's a little bit different. And I don't know whether it is dependent on the, the temperature in my kitchen or exactly what, but every batch just seems to be a little bit different. And by um, sharing with you what the signs are as we go through the process, that is much better than saying it's a certain amount of time or you get it to a certain temperature. So we'll just watch for the signs as we go forward. So we're gonna move over to the stove and we will I'll meet you over there in just a moment before we go over to the stove I thought I would show you what our ghee looks like this was a batch that I made several months ago and um, this is what it looks like just exactly like butter um, in the lead-in picture for this video, you saw what looked like yellow oil. And that's what it will look like right after we put it into the jars when it's hot. But at room temperature, it goes solid again. And I just keep a lid on this and keep it right up here in the cabinet. I also wanted to show you this station that I have all ready to go. I have uh, lids and rings washed and air dried ready to go. And then I have a strainer with four layers of cheesecloth. This is what we will be using to strain uh, the ghee once it uh, is r just right before we put it in the pot, uh, put it in the jars. Then I have this cooling rack. This is where we will put the jars. And then I have these two cork um, discs ready for um, uh, over in the oven. I have a cookie sheet with our jars, six half pint jars. Um, and they are in the oven at 200 degrees, getting ready to, um, they're being sanitized and heated. We're going to want to put them in hot jars. Now, if you'll take a look right over here, I have some utensils ready in case I need them. Um, the butter is all melted, and at this stage, I have had this butter boil up and catch me off guard and it, some of it got on my glasses thankfully I was wearing glasses and my clothes so I kind of watch it at this point um, it's just barely starting to boil the first time I made ghee it just seemed so unusual to me to boil butter um, that wasn't anything that I had been used to before but it kind of bloops up one of these times and it just um, will be a little bit active and, and um, shoot the oil right at us. Now, as it, I only have it on six, which is medium. I don't want it to burn. Butter with the milk solids has a very low smoke point, burn point, which is about between 250 and 350. When we are done, the ghee will have a much higher smoking temperature, about 485. And so that is one of the distinct advantages of ghee, is that it doesn't smoke at such a low pressure, at uh, such a low temperature, so that you can um, use it for frying and for like cooking eggs. 
a lot of times when we cook eggs or whatever, the butter burns before the eggs get done, but not necessarily with ghee because ghee has a much higher uh, smoking temperature. Now, this little foam that is starting to form right here, um, this is an important landmark. And pretty soon, the whole pot should be covered with this very thin bubbled, very tiny bubbled foam. And what that is, is a mixture of proteins and sugar and air. And so it will build up a nice little foam here in just a minute as it begins to boil. And um, then that foam will stay in place for, a, oh, I don't know, three or four minutes. And then it converts. And after this foam has converted, then we know that the water is at the bottom and the oil is on the top. And so we should be seeing a different kind of a boil. And really from this point on, I won't be doing any stirring. So that tiny bubbled foam is starting to build. And we're just going to let that build for three or four minutes. So we'll go off camera now and come back when we have that layer of foam all over the top. So this foam is building. Now, sometimes when I do it, the whole pot is covered with this foam and it appears to be maybe a quarter of an inch thick to where you cannot even see any of the butter. But this time and a couple of other times when I've done it, it appears that it does not do that all the way. But still, if you just observe the foam, it is very tiny bubbles. It's a very fine textured foam. And we just let it bubble this way now until it converts. Um, and we'll be turning it up here in just a couple of minutes because we want that water then to bubble up in larger bubbles, bigger bubbles with a different sound. So I'm hoping that you can hear this sound a little bit. It's going to be a few more minutes before these bubbles convert to the larger variety. So we'll go off camera now and come back so that we can show you the, the different type of bubbles. So you may notice that the bubbles have increased in size um, and the fine textured foam is being pushed off to the side. Um, it no longer is as much in the center as it was before. I also have turned the heat up one notch, so I'm at six and a half now. And we should see, if you notice right now, the butter is still buttery color. It still has that whitish, milky um, color to it. And all of that has to go away before we have ghee. And so we still have milk solids. The sugars and the proteins are still mixed in there. The water is now escaping. The bubbles are a little bit larger and are moving that fine foam off to the side. We're going to watch here for just a minute, see if we see any other changes. This has been on the heat now for about 20 minutes. And there is no more of that fine textured foam being produced. This is actually a little bit more that is hanging around than usually happens. Usually almost all of it is pushed to the side with these larger bubbles. But as I mentioned earlier, every single time I do ghee, it's just a little bit different. And the sound is also different. I don't know if you can hear that. There's more of a bubble popping sound.
So we are going to continue to simmer this. It might take a few more minutes before we will see the color difference as the milk solids start settling to the bottom, the sugars and the proteins are gonna start settling to the bottom. Now, some people at this point will skim off that foam. A good article that I read about ghee said not to do that. Uh, the only time we'll skim off foam is toward the end once it gets clarified so that we will be able to see clear to the bottom of the pan. And at that point, we may skim off just a little bit. Most of this foam will be trapped in the cheesecloth when we pour it through. Now, I can start seeing a separation. Um, if we look really closely, you'll see the yellower places are just the buttery oil and the white dots are the sugars and the, and the protein. So we should have some clarified butter here in just a, a few minutes. So we'll go off camera and come back when there is a more distinct difference. So now you see the more yellowy buttery oil coming to the surface and the whitish milky color is now um, sinking down. Also, the water bubbles as they are popping up are building a different type of foam. Notice that right through here is the only remnant of that really fine textured foam. So I am going to skim quickly just across. I'm using just a little strainer. I'm going to skim across quickly and see if I can get rid of some of this foam. Because we need to be able to see the bottom of the pan here shortly. There is a sound difference now. The butter is clarifying. I can still see little specks of the milk solids that are being bubbled up. We want those to sink down completely and stick to the bottom of the pan. Notice the difference in this foam around here. Larger bubbles, larger textured foam, a much more vibrant yellow color is appearing. No more milky color. We're getting very close to having clarified butter here. Now I'm going to tilt the pan. Uh, Jim's going to back up just a little bit. Look to see at the bottom of the pan to see if anything is starting to stick. I'm gonna do it very gently. It's sinking, but so far nothing is really sticking. And we can really tell that because of the little specks that we see bubbling up in the yellow oily. Um, it's the buttery oil. Completely different foam now. All right, we're going to go off camera and we'll come back when we have the clarified butter. What we have here now are oil bubbles. The milky bubbles off to the side are not being produced. So I'm just going to take a quick sweep around, see if I can get some of that milky, bubbly stuff out. And we now have clarified butter, if you can see that. We lost our video for a second, so I just am going to repeat this. Um, when you take it off the heat, when you turn the heat off, don't leave it on the heat. It's important that you move it off the heat as well, because if you leave it on the heat, even with the heat turned off, the residual could burn it. But right now we have a really good caramelization on the bottom. So I'm going to bring the um, jars over and I'll meet you over at the, the pouring station. 
here we are at the pouring station and I have my strainer with the four layers of cheesecloth. I'm going to put it in this large major measuring container and everything here is super hot. It's just right out of the oven. So I'm going to bring the ghee over now and any of the foam or any of the remaining milk solids will be trapped in the cheesecloth. You don't ever want to get the cheesecloth wet before you pour. Pour right into dry cheesecloth. And you can see the caramelization on the bottom. That is very desirable. It gives the ghee kind of a slightly nutty flavor and it is so delicious. So there we have all the caramelization of the sugars and the proteins down at the bottom. And we have removed the, the milk solids and all of the water. So I'm going to now set this aside. And because this is very hot, I am going to very carefully now pour into these jars. And the jars are also hot. I am wanting to do this so that we can obtain a good vacuum seal. I do not process these at all. And I want to get it up to the top as, as much as possible, as close as possible. Carefully filling these and if I get it clear up to the top, that will be perfect. We use ghee pretty much as a butter substitute. Anything that we would ordinarily use butter for, we use ghee for. With the exception that I don't make cakes or pie crust with it because the water is gone out of it and it is the water that produces the steam that makes cakes flaky or light and airy and fluffy. Okay, now notice that this jar didn't quite fill, so we lost about this much of the volume to the milk solids and the water that were removed. Now I'm going to take a, a paper towel and wipe the top of these very carefully because they're so hot. And because it's hot jars and hot ghee, we do not need to process them. It's fat. Now this will be the first one that we use. Um, this will go rancid if you're not careful with it. But the way that we are doing it, by achieving a vacuum seal, and if we keep it like out in our garage where it is cool and dark, it will keep indefinitely. But in the house, like we keep this one, we eat these up so fast they don't have time to go rancid. But if we were to leave this out on the countertop in the light, light um, is not good for it and, and neither is heat. But we use about one of these a week and so it doesn't have time to go bad. So I'm putting the lids on these now, I mean the bands. I'll tighten those down in just a second when I can grab them with something to protect my hands from the heat. And these will pop in about 15 or 20 minutes, meaning that as the ghee cools, um, it contracts. And as it contracts, it is going to be pulling the, these um, jars the jar lids down and it will form a nice vacuum. And then by this evening these will be cool enough to take outside to our shelves. And by morning they'll be set up and look just exactly like butter. The last batch that I made, all six of them popped within about the same minute. It was just like a little mini orchestra. Pop, pop, pop. It was great. Okay, and there we have it. Six half pints of ghee 
that will continue to build our supply. You know, if we ever have any kind of an emergency thing where civilization is no longer our society kind of um, crashes and we can't go to the store to get butter, I would be in a very sad way. And so we're making sure that we have plenty of butter stored outside in the form of ghee so that we will have um, enough to last us through any kind of a long emergency. So this is a great storage food. It is a good health food and um, it is a delicious, delicious taste. You'll notice a slight difference from butter. It tastes just a little bit more nut flavored, but it is phenomenal. So I hope you're able to try it and enjoy it. Leave your comments below. And if you like this video, will you please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. That way you will get notification anytime we publish a new video. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. Thank you.